G'day guys, my name is Don and you're watching my channel Don Astronomy and I've got an exciting episode for you guys today because today is the day that I start to begin the process of getting rid of Starlink. You heard me, I'm going to bring Starlink down and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it by using lasers. Yes, you heard me and I'm not kidding, lasers. This is the plan. I'm going to attach laser beams to my telescope. I'm then going to use Stellarium to find the, the, the satellites. And when I find the satellites, I'm going to track them. And when, once I'm tracking them, I'm going to apply the lasers. I'm going to melt those suckers and I'm going to bring them back down to Earth where they belong. So that's my plan. But I've also got a plan B if it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, instead I'm going to use the lasers that I mounted to make my observatory roof follow my telescope. So, I've got a plan B. Okay, so here's my prototype. And uh, as you can see, I've been tinkering, but I have it all working. And as promised, here are the three lasers that are going to take down Elon Musk's Starlink network. You might be thinking they're a bit small. Well, you're right, they are a bit small, unfortunately, and they won't be taking his satellites down. So we're gonna to have to keep putting them up with them for now, but they will control my observatory roof, I'm hoping. I have done a video on automation of my observatory use using ultrasonic sensors, where I put three ultrasonic sensors around my corrector plate of my Edge HD nine and a quarter. And what they do is, as my telescope moves, flew into a target. If they hit the shutter, the opened shutter, side to the open shutter of my observatory roof, uh, a, a sound bounces back and tells them to move the motor. And it works okay and it works in principle, but the problem is with the ultrasonic sensors, they've got a wide field of view of eight degrees and I've tried to make these little cones to narrow that down. Um, and they play up from time to time and I think it's because they're emitting the sound at such a wide angle and sometimes it gets trapped in the observatory and gives false readings and makes the observatory move when it shouldn't. So they haven't proven themselves to be very reliable. But with these lasers, they only have a field of view of about one and a half degrees. So I'm, ex and they're not going to be affected by sound waves uh, bouncing back and giving false readings. So I'm hoping that's going to be the fix uh, to my problem that I have. Now, the other issue I have is in my motor controller for my observatory um, I have an Arduino Uno and it has only one serial port each one of these lasers requires a serial port for itself so this Arduino Mega here has four so it can run all of these sensors now as you can see there's a little LED over here on the breadboard you might have seen it lighten up with my hands going around if I put my hand over any one of these sensors it lights up well, that LED represents my motor, and that's what will happen with my motor. So if any of them come in contact with the shutter, um, the sides of the shutter, then they'll move until um, they're all clear. Once they're all clear, it'll stop. So in theory, it will slew with my telescope, just like the ultrasonic sensors did. Okay, uh, here's the motor controller. Um, so I built this motor controller a little under 12 months ago and I have three videos in the construction. That's a DIY series where I've, I've built this from scratch and the whole automation process I went through. Um, so on my YouTube channel for anyone who's interested in that. Now, here's the Arduino Mega that I need to put in. This is the old Arduino Uno that I was telling you about. And this is the connection shield that goes onto the top of it. Now, this Arduino Mega, <coughs> pardon me, is quite larger. So hopefully it'll fit in with a bit of tinkering around, but we'll see. And I'm hoping that the uh, connector shield will just go straight on so I don't have to pull all these connectors out. And then hopefully if I just upload the old code um, with the addition of an, a library or two I might have to add, I'm hoping it will work, but things never, just go that easy do they in, in reality so we'll see
Okay, I'm all powered on and uh, I have updated the driver for uh, the Mega and I've installed my Connect Shield and so far so good. Um, and I uploaded the old code that controlled it and it seems to be working. Touch wood. I haven't tried the sensors yet, but everything else seems to be working. Give it a quick test run. So they seem to be working. So fingers crossed. Um, the transition was pretty smooth and easy. Um, that doesn't happen very often. Okay, it's time now to remove the old ultrasonic sensors and, uh, and I'll get rid of the mounting system that goes with it. I think I can simplify it and uh, I'll come up with a new system for my uh, laser sensors. So they're the old sensors and uh, I'll probably use the same plugs and put them onto my uh, my little laser sensors instead. Okay I have a mess here as per usual. This is my dovetail saddle which sits on top of the telescope on the dovetail rail. Uh, this is where my guide scope goes on top of the telescope. So what I want to do is I'm going to use this piece of aluminium here. I'm going to cut that to 400 and that's going to go around the top and I'm going to bend that in the shape of the SCT. And I've worked out that 400 will be about the size I need. So it will end up kind of going across like that in the center for 400. So then what I'm going to do is mount my lasers on this. I'm going to cut the timber. This is 25 mil, so I might do two, maybe three. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the center part yet, but they'll screw in like that. And obviously I'll paint them black. And they will sit neatly on the end the rod hopefully so it should be a nice neat finish with any luck.
Okay, so I've finally got all the sensors working. I've written the code and I've managed to get them working just like I had the ultrasonic uh, sensors working before. A little bit uh, more of a learning curve as I had to use four serial ports as opposed to the one that I was using before and the coding was a little bit more difficult. But they are working when I put my hand in the front of the sensor. You might be able to see it move there. Whoops, if I turn it on. It's very slow, but like I had with the ultrasonic sensors, they move the telescope roof. Now, I was struggling with a piece of code that I really wanted to do, and thank you, Luke, here, who's my boyfriend-in-law. <laughs> He's, uh, what are you, Luke? I'm a software engineer. He's a software engineer. How, how cool is that? So he's helped me write some code. Well, he's actually wrote the code to help the, the motor go from uh, a s slow speed to a fast speed. So once the, an object is blocked like my roof or if I'm go doing Meridian Flip or going to another target in the night, when the telescope slews after five seconds, if I hold my hand over this, it will then speed up and go to that position of the telescope faster, which is just fantastic. Look at that. Hey, what are you doing? So you can see we've got moon, the moon and Venus up in the sky today and the sun's out and it's quite bright. So you can see behind me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slew the telescope to the moon and hopefully the roof, the roof will follow and I'll probably speed it up because it'll take a little bit of time. Slew and see what happens. Now once the, um, the sensors start to get blocked, as you'll see, it'll swing around here. It should start the motor, the roof starts off at a very slow speed and now it will go faster until it reaches its target and um, this is kind of real time at the moment but I will now uh, speed this up just to make the video a bit quicker. And of course, um, there's a bloody big cloud right where it's supposed to be. Okay, hopefully we can see it's clearing. And that's the moon. Okay, so I'm going to uh, simulate moving now across the night sky and hopefully the roof will just follow. All right, I think that's working pretty well and I'm pretty happy with that. A bit more uh, accurate now that I put the four sensors around. Um, I've been over just about every angle and I can cover it quite comfortably uh, from pretty much anywhere in the observatory, so happy days for me. Okay, uh, conclusion. I think that the lasers work much better than the ultrasonic sensors and having the addition of the fourth one up on the top here um, is given better coverage for that window and I can confidently get 90% um, of what the observatory can see so I'm really happy with that. Uh, I'm one, concerned about one thing and that is dew, dew building up on the laser sensors and I haven't tested that, it hasn't been cold enough and I'm hoping it won't give a false signal and cause the roof to move. If so, I might have to put some little baby dew shields on these things to counteract that. So hopefully that won't be an issue, but we'll see. And guys, if you've managed to get this far into the video to the end, I thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.